with the sad passing and more this is wrestling hub my name is john and you're watching the wrestling report before we get into the rest of the video make sure you subscribe to wrestling hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling also don't forget to follow us on instagram at wrestling hub official and follow us on twitter at wrestling underscore hub Revealing how he would see professional wrestling promoters deal with fights backstage, Rob Van Dam said on his One of a Kind podcast, it happened and it wasn't that big of a deal. I'm sure people are going to sh on this opinion, but that's what I said when I saw that every single site was picking this up. I said to Katie, I'm sure it's my old school fundamentals, but I said, I don't think this should be that big of a deal. She said, right, they're both fighters, right? I see at weigh-ins where they do the face-off and they take the picture. A lot of times they get too close and they pie face and start going at it or whatever. And I get, you got to set some strict rules if you don't want that to happen every single time. I get it with that. But with wrestling, it's even a little bit different because the competitors don't have the whole injury, win or lose, be in the best condition possible to have every advantage wrestlers aren't in that the same way that a fighter is so if they let out a little bit of steam every once in a while usually what would happen is that the promoter would put those two in the ring as soon as possible that happened every time that i can think about it that's what paul did with me and taz it's always been that way and i always find that people work it out by working together i'm surprised that it's that big of news but if you look at it like it's football sure whatever i guess with wrestling i don't know it's not something you should just ignore if you're the boss and you got millions and millions invested and some of that is going to these two players and you need to handle the business end of it to protect your investment besides that it's not the same thing as the corporate office it's the dressing room With it previously noted that Nick Aldis is producing for WWE, he said this about his deal with the company too. Chris Van Vliet, none at the moment. They just invited me to come and see how everything works in Shadow as a producer and be a part of the meetings in the whole television operation. I've worn a lot of hats. I think people who have followed my career, particularly in the last few years, know that. In addition to wrestling, I was wearing a lot of hats behind the scenes at my last place in WA. I certainly don't feel like it's a completely new situation to me, having said that there is pro wrestling and there is wwe just taking in the sheer volume of the operation and the number of people involved in the scale of everything just that alone has been the basis of my time so far it's all very much a handshake situation why don't you come in and see how all this works see if you like it they've been very good to me and very accommodating as far as they said this is as much about whether you like it where that goes i don't know i'm okay with that it's tough with the internet and social media because people want to put this definitiveness on everything he's with wwe that's it he's not wrestling anymore even the boys backstage are saying that slow down they were very open with me if you don't want to do this that's totally cool i may as well say it obviously i would love the other thing wrestle until the day comes i'm going to explore other opportunities this is absolutely something i want to do in the end the question will be whether i'm ready to do that now Promoting his upcoming match at Impact Victory Road, Tommy Dreamer said this about the possibility of retiring should he lose, telling Under the Ring, When I announced it, people were like, hasn't Tommy Dreamer put his career on the line before? Hasn't Tommy Dreamer retired before? I never retired. I left WWE's ECW and I have put my career on the line before, but I haven't lost. When I say I'll retire, I will never come back to wrestling. I will never wrestle. I don't wrestle because I need the money. I wrestle because I love it. I've always been a man of my word. When I did Hardcore Justice, I booked it and I said I would never wrestle raven again and i never have i said i would never go back to the ecw arena unless it was on my terms it was in a world where stipulations aren't real from paul Heyman's brain they're real if i'm in charge if i say something trust me the last time you ever saw tommy dreamer and terry funk together i did that in my own company same thing last time i walked the aisle with beulah mcgillicuddy i did that as much as i would love to be there with those people you have to be a man of your word if i lose i lose that's it no more matches i haven't taken any bookings for 2024 i told promoters to hang on until friday we shall see
speaking about streaming on Twitch to wrestling news, Zelina Vega said this about that and her relationship with WWE. It was something I was so reluctant to do for the longest time. Soraya was trying so hard to get me into it. You'd be perfect for it. You play video games anyway. You might as well do it on Twitch and have other like-minded people to talk to and play with. Nah, it's my space and I like to play video games alone. She's like, you're going to like it. If you get past the setup part, you're going to love it. After suffering through that, she was right. And she usually is because she knows me so well. It grew into this massive thing. I'm so big on being authentic. If you're authentic, people are going to recognize that. You can't just stick anybody in my position with a kitty headset and say blah, blah, blah about this episode. And they have no idea what they're talking about because they'll see right through that. That was one of the major things that I told WWE initially. I didn't know this was going to blow up as much as it did, but I feel there is an audience that we are missing here. Especially with everything going digital now, this is where the kids are and where we're going to get them. There is a way to blend the worlds. Once they kind of figured out what I meant by that, that's really what was missing. The communication there, once we talked it out and figured out this is how we can work together, that's why I'm back and why I'm back on Twitch and everything worked out. It's crazy how a conversation can change a lot of things. I find it funny that it took so much, and now it's become something like me and Xavier just presented an award at the streamies. She goes from 2020 that was kind of a hard time to now. It's crazy to see how it's evolved. Giving a status update on former AEW Women's Champion Thunder Rosa, it was said that Fightful Select has been told that Thunder Rosa could return to the ring at almost any time provided creative is produced for her. Rosa had spoken to some of this past week in StarCast, and sources within AEW indicated that she is ready to return, whether or not she does imminently remains to be seen. Touching on the nature of Brock Lesnar's WWE contract, Steve Carrier of Ringside News noted that Brock Lesnar, rumor going around that he's on a verbal agreement only with WWE, that is a lie. A tenured source told us Brock Lesnar has no verbal agreements. His contract with WWE is in writing. Recalling his time in AEW and Ring of Honor, Cody Rhodes admitted on the Dale Jr. Download podcast, Sometimes I get in my own way when it comes to my own creative and there's a prime example. When I was in this company named Ring of Honor, wonderful company that really took care of me and Joe Koff was the guy who got me amazing. But they just let me do whatever. A WWE guy, people are coming to see him, you know, because they were smaller crowds. He's got a big autograph line. Let's whatever and one of the things I did was I had two mascots that were people in bear suits suits. It didn't make a lick of sense and they'd be at the signing stamping with me. One was a business bear, one was the drug-free bear. It was all this nonsensical. It stemmed off a YouTube series so it had roots, but if I look at the photos and you see me with these two bears behind me, that's what creative freedom gone too far. That's what it looks like. I loved it. Even in my time at AEW as executive vice president, also in my way a little bit. Someone else make a decision for me here, you know? Because at that point, I had all these decisions. I'm making it. I'm doing it my way you need guidance you need those people who've been there and done it and yeah so i had some big home runs and some big misses In an update on the merger between UFC and WWE under Endeavor, Brandon Thurston wrote on social media that WWE all-staff message from CEO Nick Khan says WWE UFC merger under TKO Group Holdings will be completed on September 12th. Expect a press release soon. For a potential reason as to why CM Punk wanted out of AEW following his firing, Dave Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio, I can't say because I can't get into his brain, but yes, there were a lot of people that thought that when the contract was signed with the Young Bucks, Omega, and Page, that he wanted out and that something was going to happen. Mentioning what could happen in the aftermath of CM Punk's AEW termination, Eric Bischoff noted on his 83 Weeks podcast, The other thing that you want to consider is you're hearing a lot of terms, unsafe work environment, that's a legal term. If you're an attorney, your ears perk up if you use that in context. Let's assume that Tony Khan didn't fire Punk. 
and he suspended him instead and then brought Punk back. What if there was something, whether it involved Punk or not, that was a more serious situation took place where there was bodily injury backstage? That becomes a lawsuit in a legal situation. That is what someone can get an attorney and sue for, and let's say Warner Brothers and Discovery owns equity, and until someone comes forward and denies it, I believe I'm right. At some point, Tony Khan is not only responsible for AEW, he's exposing Warner Discovery to litigation, because they own part of the company. If someone decides to sue, aside from the fact that the cons have a lot of money, so does Warner Bros. Discovery, and they're gonna get entangled. In some unfortunate news, yesterday, WWE legend General Adnan passed away at the age of 84. No cause of death has been revealed at this time, as many in the pro wrestling world paid tribute. Sergeant Slaughter wrote, Sorry to hear the passing of Adnan al -Kassi. In 1991, WWE asked me to portray an Iraqi sympathizer. Adnan, being born in Baghdad and a high school friend of Saddam Hussein, was brought in as my general. Together, we became the most evil force in wrestling history. Rest in peace, my friend. Adnan was an amazing talent and a gifted athlete. With him mentoring me and giving me the knowledge of Iraqi and Saddam's ways, I took the Iraqi sympathizer character way beyond what WWE ever imagined when they asked me to play that role. Adam Pierce wrote, Been a tough day. Godspeed, Adnan. As a kid watching AWA TV, I hated you. But I'll never forget the lessons you taught me as a young wrestler facing whatever cheek you managed against me in those Minnesota and Wisconsin towns. Rest well, sir. My gratitude forever. Arya Davari said, Rest in peace, Sheik Adnan. I had the privilege of having him as my manager a few times. Midwest All-Star Wrestling wrote, We here at MAW are deeply saddened by the passing of Sheik Adnan. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family, fans, and friends. Rest in peace. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all later.